So, Peppermint is a movie that is intriguing, albeit only if what intrigues you most is watching paint dry. Peppermint is an insulting film, it tells you that it's something interesting, something good, when it's anything but. This movie is best described as being the Punisher and Death Wish wrapped up into a sinful burrito that has about as much rationality to it as a fish in a desert. By the way, sorry if there's any weird sounds, I'm having to record this during the rain. There's complications, naturally. Peppermint is written by a man named Chad St. John, who is so low level I couldn't find anything out about him other than that he also wrote the screenplay for London Has Fallen. So he can definitely write an okay movie. I'm guessing that he just didn't want to with Peppermint. Peppermint is unique in the action movie genre. Normally these films, when they have issues, it's because the action was bogged down with exposition dumps in between more action. It's one of the many reasons why Mission Impossible Fallout was so good. Christopher McQuarrie knows how to make a good looking, good sounding, and well written movie without some parts feeling heavy and out of place. It's not the case with this one. In Peppermint, Mr. Chad decides to opt out of that and instead has his key mantra while writing this movie be, how do we make Jennifer Garner say the least lines possible? In Peppermint, Jennifer Garner is a protagonist. She plays Riley North, a mother who loses her family and decides to dole out her own personal brand of justice in revenge. An important part of vigilante movies is helping the audience understand the vigilante, making the audience sympathetic to what otherwise is a criminal killing people because of moral superiority. Now, the reason I say that Jennifer Garner not having any lines is an issue is because everything else we have to go off the dialogue doesn't paint a vigilante trying to get revenge for her family. It paints a psychopath who relishes in violence who became unhinged from their deaths and uses this not as revenge, no, but rather a means to act out violent fantasies. Not a hero, not an anti-hero, a criminal on the same levels as the one she hates. The recent Death Wish remake is similar to this. In it, Bruce Willis loses his family and goes on a crime-fighting bender, but we see his thought process. We see how he justifies it and we see how vulnerable and hurt he is. I think Death Wish is a god-awful film, but it at least helps us feel sympathetic to Bruce Willis. It helps us feel good that he triumphed at the end. The writing is just stupid and peppermint. Like, because we never get an ounce of what Riley is thinking about, the closest to it is her dead daughter randomly appearing in scenes, and it's just so stupid. Why do you do this? It doesn't make her seem like a hero, it just makes her seem even more insane. This isn't a reason why she's doing it. It's just, oh, there's the dead daughter again. I didn't know I was watching The Conjuring. I thought I was just watching a good old action movie. What the fuck? Now, I'll be honest, it's not just Chad St. Twat's fault that this is a movie that rivals my hatred and vitriol for Red Sparrow. Don't get me wrong, it's mainly his fault. You can't make a good boat if the hull is made of goddamn paper, but the sales, the directing by Pierre Morel was atrocious. Shot-wise, Peppermint is nothing to write home about. Most of the film is very basic filmmaking. It's opening shot, close up, cut to another close up, cut to zoom out showing both people, cut back, cut back again, new scene. What pisses me off is the Pierre Morel directed Taken. Yeah, Taken with Liam fucking Neeson. So he knows how to direct a good movie, but every time we get to this scene where Jennifer Garner could easily narrate over to give some context, we get this super fast, rapid cuts with white flashes across the screen. It's by far the most violent part of this R-rated movie. It's a visual fucking assault, and I have no goddamn clue how he did that, and I was like, yeah, keep that. I like that. Like, listen, Pierre, if you're watching this, don't fucking do that. It looks cheap and more than anything, looks like you smashed a bunch of effects together in Windows Movie Maker and called it a fucking day. It's very, very poor. On one hand, you can blame the writer for many of the problems because the director's just stitching together that shit, but they work in conjunction. And the directing, it's, it's a fucking abomination. There are maybe one or two good scenes in this movie that don't look cheap, that don't look generic, that look like they're actually special and unique to this film. That they're, you know, this is a new movie. That this isn't just a re-stitched together action film. You can blame just Chad, you can blame just Pierre, or you can blame both motherfuckers. And I'm gonna do that. Putting aside all that, the cast is fairly unremarkable. Despite my gripes of Jennifer Garner's role, she did an excellent job, frankly, playing Riley as a happy mother and then as a vengeful psychopath. All of the issues I have with her character are not at all her fault. It's entirely the fault of Chad St. Twat. John Gallagher Jr. did a fine job, but he was the only other worthy one of note. The rest were very, very forgettable. Overall, Peppermint has a few good things. Occasionally, Pierre pulls a nice scene out of his ass, and Jennifer Garner does a really good job of playing a badass. The film is just more bad than badass as a whole. Normally, I enjoy bad movies, just because of how outlandishly stupid they can be, but Peppermint is far more along the lines of Den of Thieves and Red Sparrow. There's a modicum of good in it, the tiniest sliver of quality, the rest is boring, frustrating, and sloppy. 
While I was doing my research, I did come across that it was produced by STX Entertainment as well as H Brothers. And for those of you that don't know, they really invest in a shitload of movies, especially H Brothers, with H Brothers specifically investing in films they think will do very good in China, which this film definitely would. It would be perfect for a Chinese audience. It's the right amount of action that really works for that demographic for whatever goddamn reason. They really like action movies in China, but not so much story films. I don't know why. Another one they produced recently, STX. STX at least produced Den of Thieves. I think H Brothers may have been attached to that, but both were attached to Mile 22, which was another one that they had an intent to work on an American audience, but also an intent to work on a Chinese audience. Not a lot of people know this, but China has a lot of power in terms of movie production, because if you want a big opening weekend overseas, you have to make sure a Chinese audience is going to like it, so you got to tweak stuff around. It's why they actually changed the origin to Iron Man, because if they had made the Doctor Tibetan, it would not have done well, because for whatever reason, people in China apparently apparently hate people from Tibet. I don't I don't really care. It's just an interesting thing of note is that they may have actually had no intention of making this a really good movie or putting a lot of effort into it and just hitting these couple of bullet points so that when they do ship it to America and then ship it overseas, it does, you know, pretty good here and then pretty great here. Despite that though, I'm still an American. I still had to watch it in America and I was so bothered by it. I had to regain my faith in the film as a whole and watch some other movies. Looking at everything Peppermint had to offer, I give it a two. A one for Garner's performance and a one for being a cohesive film, albeit not providing anywhere near enough for the audience to agree that she's a hero. I don't think the movie is certain on it either, though, since it flip-flops between cops supporting her and disavowing her actions. I do not recommend seeing Peppermint. Instead, however, I recommend watching the following, which are currently on Netflix and actually worth watching. Ex Machina, a high 8 out of 10 and a beautiful film. Thor Ragnarok, 8 out of 10, a very entertaining and enjoyable film to watch, as well as being quite funny. Constantine, 4 out of 10, a glorious clusterfuck and well worth laughing laughing at. Star Wars The Last Jedi. I may hate what Ryan Johnson did with the Star Wars franchise, but he made a pretty good movie. 8 out of 10. Black Panther. Low 8 out of 10. I appreciate what Ryan Coogler did, but the third act is very poorly made. No Country for Old Men. 10 out of 10. The Coen brothers did a phenomenal job at this film. Her. 9 out of 10. Spike Jones did a fantastic job at directing this masterpiece, and it is now one of my all-time favorite films. Her also includes a fantastic performance by Joaquin Phoenix that is well worth watching going into seeing The Joker next year. Spider-Man 3, 7 out of 10. Serenity, 7 out of 10. Firefly, a very good TV show, and an even better movie. Doom, 3 out of 10. It has Dwayne Johnson, enough said. The Cloverfield Paradox, 6 out of 10. I really like what J.J. Abrams does with the Cloverfield universe, even though most of the movies aren't that great. Cloverfield is much better than the Cloverfield Paradox, but it's still better than Peppermint. As above, so below, 7 out of 10. A horror film filmed almost entirely within the catacombs with an excellent cast and a fan-fucking-tastic performance by Ben Feldman. The Hateful Eight, 10 out of 10. One of my all-time favorite films by Quentin Tarantino, up there with Pulp Fiction in my opinion. Mute, 7 out of 10. A beautiful portrayal by Alexander Skarsgård, and a fantastic ambiance to the film. For the price of a ticket to Peppermint, you can watch all of those movies on Netflix. It's a much better deal, I assure you. And I'm not even fucking sponsored, I'm just saying, don't waste your money on Peppermint. Even the low ones I listed are still worth watching because of their absolute absurdity. So please, do not waste your money on seeing Peppermint this weekend. Thank you guys for watching. If you did see Peppermint, I'd be curious to know what you thought of it. I normally view things from a much more critical standpoint, so I'm always curious what you guys thought of them. And let me know what you'd like to see me talk about next. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this in the future, and make sure to hit the bell icon to be notified when my newest content is out. And if you'd like to support and represent the channel, go check out my merch store. The link is in the description below. I've just launched a new line of fall winter designs full of tons of shirt styles and three brand fucking new designs. I'm really proud of it, and I'd love to know what you guys think of it. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. A huge thank you to Patreon supporters Anonymous and Matt Porter. I really appreciate it. I'm an idiot.